Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Jimmy. I'm Natalie. And for the last few months, we've been building out this retired school bus into our own schoolie conversion. So if you saw our last video, we had a couple hiccups getting our bus back from the mechanic, but somehow still managed to get it back and install not one, but two fresh water tanks. So this week we are fully ready to start plumbing, which feels crazy to say. This is such a huge thing. We don't have any experience with plumbing, but we've been researching because we've had plenty of time to do it while our bus has been in the <laughs> shop. I've got to be honest though, I'm a little nervous about how this is going to turn out. Plumbing is just so new to both of us. Yeah, we have been dreading this day, but it's finally here. So we think we've done our research. We'll, we'll find out by how many leaks we'll have. So we kind of went into detail last week, but we actually bought two freshwater tanks for our bus conversion. So all in all, we'll have three tanks at the end. This week, I'll just be focusing on plugging up the freshwater plumbing, which hopefully by the end of this week, I'll have the drain lines, air vents, um, the water fill and as well as the main water line with the pump hooked up and everything. So the first thing that we did a couple weeks ago was when planning all this out, we wrote out this large diagram and we made a list of everything we needed, every fitting, every pipe. It took a while, it wasn't fun, but we got it done. And when you have a list this big, you get a lot of Amazon packages. So this is what that looks like. This is it. This is everything that we need. And we've been holding on to these packages for two weeks while our bus was in the shop. So hopefully I haven't lost anything. I'm gonna open all these up and start sorting. Yeah, I was really close to finishing all this when I realized I actually have two more packages that I forgot. So I'm gonna go grab those. Here it is, the final pile of plumbing things. It does look like a lot, I know, but we have a lot of components in here like water filters, pumps, etc. that kind of all use their own fittings. So based on our research, this is what we came up with. Basically the water tanks have four fittings in the order of most to least complex. It's the main water line, and then we've got the fill line, the air vent, and then the drain line that we would only use for emergencies or when we're cleaning out the tank. So I'm gonna start off with the easiest thing and install the drain line. This one is really simple. I just have a garden hose valve with an on off switch and then a one and a half inch to half inch pipe reducer. The Class A Customs water tanks that we bought have two valves that are half inch, but the other two are one and a half. So pretty much everything I bought uses the half inch pipe fitting. So I just bought these reducers so that it can fit with all my other fittings. So this one's real simple. I'll just screw this on and then I'm gonna add this directly to our water tank. I got that done. The second one I'm gonna to try to tackle is the air vent. All right, so the air vent is actually gonna be really similar to how I did the drain, but with a few differences. So one is, is that when I, after I add the reducer, I'll actually have a fitting that'll convert it to a barb fitting. And from there, I'm gonna be running this plastic ID tubing. Since I have two tanks, I am planning on joining the two together via this T. And then basically I'm gonna run the line into the bus and then back out to create a little rise. And then I'll be pointing it on the outside. I bought some mesh so I could cover up the exposed tubing at the end so that bugs and stuff don't crawl back up into the tubing. So I'm kind of playing it by ear and I'll see what it's like when I get there. So I just finished running the air vent lines for the two water tanks. You can kind of see the rise in tubing right there. 
Um, that's pretty much all I need to do inside the bus. I just wanted to make sure that the air vent came in a little bit higher than the tanks so that the water doesn't flow out when I'm just on a hill or something. But if we go underneath, I can kind of show you what I did there. So there's a single tube running from both tanks that run up there and then back down. And then on this side, I just clamped a mesh screen so that no bugs or debris would get up the tubing. And then right here, I just have a simple T connection that runs from both tanks. All right, now is on to the third most difficult line, which will be the water fill line. Stick this like here somehow. I'm just gonna push this down through the hole we made. So I've officially finished three of the four connections on the water tanks. I've got the drain, the air vent, and then finally the water fill. This is the contraption I built for the water fill. It looks pretty crazy, but basically I just have a garden hose connection up here that elbows into a SureFlow sediment filter that will just take out any large debris before we put that water into our tanks. And then it actually tees off here in a garden hose splitter. I chose this one since it has on-off valves for each of the, the two ways that it goes. So using this, we can actually choose whether we're filling up both tanks one tank or the second tank. So I feel like that'll come in handy later. This will give us a little bit more control over how we fill our tanks. So finally, the last thing is to do the main water line. This is the thing I've been worried about and just dreading all week, but it's time to get started. So can you believe that even though I'm technically three fourths of the way done, all of this on the table is what I need to use for the last component. It feels like I haven't made a dent in this pile. So yesterday was really rainy and stormy, which worked out great for me because that meant Jimmy came inside to help me work on all these window coverings and we knocked out a lot of them. We tried them out last night and they are pretty black out. It's really hard to tell that there's any light and on inside the bus for the windows that have the coverings in them. I'm not even halfway done with making these, but so far it looks good. I really like how the hooks are working. They're really nice and mechanical and I've seen a lot of people use magnets for their window coverings and I've also seen a lot of people say that they don't work as well as they thought they would. So we really like the hooks. Jimmy, how many miles do you think you've walked between those two tables today? Probably at least two or three. <laughs> it's really fun though. I like, I like going through all the pieces and like I go over here to my notes and I'll go, all right, I gotta find this piece. And I go and I actually find it, which is really relieving because there's probably like 30 packages over here with different stuff in it. So I'm glad we didn't miss anything.
getting to the fun part because I just cut a hole in our sink compartment where I'm gonna run the cold line. I've got the, uh, the PEX connection coming out there. From there, we should be able to tee off and connect one line that will go to our water heater and another one that will go to the cold water tap for the sink. So speaking of, I'm kind of done running all the major lines except for the hot line. And to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the water heater that we bought. I'm feeling really good about the progress we're making. I just installed the water heater, minus the propane line. But I did run the main propane line behind the shower, back to the back. Natalie and I have been going back and forth on where to put the propane tank. We were really considering mounting it outside, next to the battery box, outside the bus. There's this perfect empty space about the size of a propane tank that would fit it perfectly. But we're kind of behind where we wanted to be at this point anyway, so I think what we decided to do is actually move it inside so we don't have to worry about the safety of mounting it outside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount it under the bed, kind of next to that hidden toilet area. And our plan is just to build that sealed box that you see most people build inside their vehicle. So we'll have a sealed box with a whole exhaust leading outside so that if there's a malfunction on the propane tank, all the propane would leak outside and not inside the vehicle. So we're gonna be as safe as we can, but I think this is gonna be safer than trying to mount it outside with our abilities. This is a ventless water heater, meaning that you can keep it in a compartment like this. And I think there's, an, there's a sensor, it'll shut off the combustion if it senses a low oxygen rate inside the compartment. So our plan is, I think for washing hands and whatnot, I think it'll be fine because it just needs to spark up um, just enough so that we can wash our hands or do dishes. But for longer takes, we might have to open one of the cabinet doors to let an oxygen flow in. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, I am a little worried about the heat, but the manual does mention that we only need eight inches of clearance above it. We almost have that. I think it's about six to eight inches before the sink will start. So we'll kind of play around with it and we might have to add like a heat guard to the sink um, just so that it doesn't get damaged. But I, I think, I mean, according to the manual, we're doing everything right. And we will have um, carbon monoxide detectors inside this, this compartment as well as the compartment for the diesel heater that we have. We're trying to play it as safe as we can since you know we're building all this and we might not have as much face in, in ourselves as like a professional builder. So, you know, we're doing what we can to mitigate it. Hey guys, I know I've been kind of MIA for most of this video. Jimmy has just been pumping out the plumbing so quickly that I have been inside editing just pretty much as quickly as he can film it. So we've been just firing on all cylinders this week. So I have been around, just I know I haven't made it into much of the video. Um, but I did want to give you a quick tour of our setup just to kind of briefly explain where everything is and how it works together more functionally. So right here is where we're gonna fill up our water tanks. We have a sediment filter just for rocks and debris. And then we also have two switches that allow us to fill up one or both of our water tanks at a time just for more flexibility later on. So that's how we fill up the tanks and then whenever we want to pull water from them, we pull from these ID2 things over here. Uh, we have another set of switches so that we can choose to pull from one or both of the tanks again just for more flexibility. We have another sediment filter for a good measure and then the ID2 thing continues down to our SureFlow water pump and then the little black contraption next to it is our accumulator tank which helps to regulate the pressure in the system. So from the accumulator tank the water then would flow upwards to our big water filter. This gets the water so that it's drinkable. It goes through two different stages, um, more and more granular. And then from there the water is distributed through our PEX tubing. So the red tubes are designed for hot water and the, the blue tubes are, I think it's the same material but it's just to indicate that it's cold water. So the red lines go to our water heater and that heats everything up. We have a propane tank that we're gonna add in the back for the water heater. And then from the water heater, the hot water is distributed to our sink and to our shower. So finally, let's step inside and I'll show you our shower. So the hot and cold lines run up through here to go to this mixer valve, which is gonna have the handle so we can determine how much hot or cold water we want in the shower and then it flows from the mixer valve through a red line to up here where it's going to come out of the faucet. 
we still have to put a drain, so we haven't done any of the gray water system yet, but that's how we're gonna get water at our shower. So we have a couple small fittings we still need to add, but I think we're pretty much ready to test this thing. I'm fully expecting there to be a couple of leaks. I think that's normal. I gotta be ready for it and not freak out. But we're gonna pull the bus to where we can get access to a garden hose and try to fill it up and then try to pull from it with a bucket to catch the water and keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> This is so exciting. <laughs> yeah, this is really exciting. Gosh, we're so close. Oh, it's better starting. You ready? I'm ready. Oh, God. Oh. Ready? Yeah. We just cannot catch a break with these mechanical issues, I'm telling you. We're trying to jump start the bus off of the truck. So I hope that this works. We've had some issues trying to start it before and we think that it's a battery problem, but we've been told recently that our batteries are okay. And we've had it hooked up to a charger consistently to try to keep the batteries topped off, even while it's not running. Even though we drove the bus a week ago, so it really shouldn't be dead right now. It's just frustrating. There's nothing I love more in the world than that sound. Don't tell Jimmy I said that though. I hate this. <laughs> Why does this always happen? I don't know. Um, at least it's a battery issue. Stay yeah. on the bright side. Yeah, I don't know what's going on now, so. That's fun. We're going to have to look into that after this, but we still want to go through with our water test and we're going to pull it forward and hook it up to the water spigot and actually do the test now. Yeah, we are staying focused on our goal. Yeah. <laughs> think I'm ready. You ready? Oh, it's coming in. It's leaking just a little. Yep. We just filled up the tank just a little bit and all in all, it's not too bad. There was a huge leak, but it's not our system. It's the hose that we're using. So we're gonna try to find a slightly newer, better hose. And uh, so far it looks good. I don't see any major leaks on our end. I'm sure there's gonna be one or two eventually. It's cool seeing the water rush in. <laughs> All right, we got a much better hose. Take two. I can feel the air coming out of our air vent hose here. That's a really good sign, isn't it? Oh yeah. We just tested the drain and the air vent to make sure they're working and they seem like they are. Now we're going to try to pull water from the tank and use it for our kitchen sink, which Jimmy is going to man, and our shower, which I'm going to be in charge of dealing with. Water might go everywhere. It could leak at pretty much any point in the system all over the inside of the bus. So we're on high alert. We each have a bucket, fully ready to get splashed. Bye. Bye. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, I can hear it. Here it comes. It comes in the uh, tank. Uh-huh. Oh my god. Is it leaking? I can see the pipes moving. No, it, I don't see any leaks yet. I'm gonna play with this, I guess. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Whoa, that's water! Yeah. So no leaks, right? I don't see there's any leaks. a lot leaks. of air coming through. Yeah, that's air for sure. Oh, there's a leak right there. Okay. That's one drip. Alright, I'm gonna stop okay. it. Okay. There is a teeny tiny leak in the shower that will be very easy to fix. We're gonna try to fix that and then we're gonna test the shower for real, but the sink faucet is great. All right, we're gonna test the shower now. So Jimmy's about to cut the pump back on. 
I'm feeling ready. I'm honestly not that afraid of getting splashed because it's like 100 degrees out here, so it wouldn't be the worst thing. That's just on a little, ooh, okay. Um, yeah, there's a leak here, a big one. All right. Yeah, okay. I had it turn on just a teeny bit yeah. and it, yeah, it sprayed. So after just a few very minor hiccups, we've been able to test our system. So it seems to be working really well. There are a handful of leaks, but we can fix those no problem. <laughs> What's a water system without a few leaks? Honestly, yeah, that's how we know the water's making it through everything. <laughs> Honestly, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a small issue with sputtering. So I think we need to kind of figure out what's going on with our water filters and make sure that the pressure is able to build up fully. So we're gonna troubleshoot that a little bit, but all in all, I would consider this week a huge success. We did the entire, well, mostly one of us did the entire plumbing system in one week. I think that's pretty incredible and it's so cool to see it all working and to feel the water coming out of the faucet and out of the shower head and a couple of the pipes around it, yeah. <laughs> you know, give, it, give or take. <laughs> all in all though, really good week. Good job, Jimmy. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, we have just been going in overdrive since we got our bus back from the mechanic. We lost a full two weeks to that, and I think we're just happy to get it back. So we really got to make up that lost time, and we just got to get ahead of schedule, because right now we really got to get on the road. We are itching to get out there. Yeah, we never anticipated working on the bus build in July going into August, so we are just doing everything we can to get it on the road. Well, that's all for the plumbing setup this time, but thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye.